5 from verse 1 to 11. Luke 5 from verse 1 to 11. There's uh, been a lot of beautiful points raised, uh, one of which is the, uh, the people were pressing on him to hear the word. The word was so precious to them that they were struggling to be sure they can hear every bit that Jesus was saying. Uh, other points have been raised about the fact that there were two votes and uh, God chose that of Peter. Prayer is that if there are only two people that God will want to choose from, uh, that you and I will be the one that He will choose. Amen. Amen. Uh, so the, the other point that I think is very crucial is the fact that uh, Peter says, I'm not even worthy of the miracle that you have done for me. Um, all the miracles we get from God are by grace and by grace alone. It's none of all to say to qualify. But the important point here that I want to add to all the other beautiful ones that have been mentioned, and I can't recall them all, is that God owes all. He owes everything. Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. He's the owner of the boat that Peter had. Because he was the owner of the wood from which the wood boat was made. He's the owner of Peter himself. He made all things. And there was nothing made that was not made by him. Silver is his, gold belongs to him. Everything that we have will be drawn from him. So there's no need for him to say thank you to anybody if they do anything for him. Whatever you are, whatever you are, comes from God. And yet, He, the one who owes all, is always saying thank you. I mean, it's like uh, <laughs> you gave your child a piece of bread and that child turns around cut a little bit of it and give it to you and you say thank you who owes the bread the bread to start with God is always saying thank you it's amazing is one of the wonders of God. I mean, for example, in Genesis 18, from verse 1 to 14, Genesis 18, 1 to 14, when Abraham prepared a meal for him, after eating the meal, he said, thank you. Where Sarah, thy wife, for we will be hand it to Sarah. All the prophecies will become a decree today. And yet, this is the God who said in Psalm 50, from verse 7 to 15. Psalm 50, from verse 7 to 15. He said, if, if I'm hungry, I won't even tell you. Because all the beasts of the forest are mine, including the cattle upon the thousand hills. He said, but if you come before me with hands given, then to call on me in the day of trouble and I will answer you. In Genesis chapter 18 from verse 20 to 22, Genesis 8, Genesis 8 from verse 20 to 22, God has just proved to Noah and his household, I can be 
deliver you from destruction. They were just coming out of the ark after the flood that swept away everybody else on earth. And then Noah decided to build an altar to God and to offer an offering to him. You would think that God will not say anything at all because God deserves to be thanked for preserving my entire family. But the Bible says when God smells the beautiful odor of the offering, to know. Promise you, from now on, seed time and harvest will never cease. I promise you. I won't even destroy the world with water you gave. Because this fellow offered <laughs> an offering from the animal that God preserved for preserving his family. God says, all right, I will do something extra. Whenever God asks anything of you, he's merely setting you up. In 1 Kings chapter 17, from verse 8 to 16, 1 Kings 17, 8 to 16, when Elijah said to the widow of Zarephath, give me that little meal that you say you have. It is so that she will not lack food for the rest of her life, including this one. In 2 Kings chapter 4, from verse 8 to 17, 2 Kings 4, 8 to 17, we discover that God accepting anything from you at all is a privilege. The great woman of Shunan said to Elisha, come to my house, come and eat. Elisha told her, I mean, Elijah told her, Elisha rather, Elisha told her, no, I don't need your food. The Bible says she constrained him. In other words, he didn't come to the world of shame. The woman had to almost use force. Let me do something good for you, O man of God. And of God said, I have enough. When God was going to say thank you to the woman, he gave her something, all her money, all her wealth, all her influence could not buy. He gave her a son. But we could learn to go a step deeper and learn a big lesson from the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Because here we are talking about saying thank you after you have received a miracle. But what we learn from the Lord Jesus Christ is that he will say thank you before the miracle. For example, in John chapter 5, John chapter 6, from verse 5 to 13, in John chapter 6, from verse 5 to 13, before Jesus Christ began to turn five loaves of bread and two fish to a banquet for 5,000 people, he first gave thanks. Before the miracle happened, he gave thanks. In John chapter 11, if you like, you can read it from the beginning to the end, but from verse 39 to 45, John 11, from the beginning to the end, when Lazarus was sick and they told Jesus Christ he was sick, he said, oh, no problem, this sickness is not unto death, it's so that God might be glorified. When he died, he told the disciples, let's go and wake him up, he's sleeping. So he knew from the beginning that this man was going to be raised from the dead. Then before he raised him from the dead, he gave 
effects. So can you imagine your situation where God has done so much for you and you have not even said thank you? Whereas you should be at the level where you are saying thank you for what he has not done. I think we need to ask God for grace. First of all, to thank him for what he has done. And to thank him for things that is yet to do. May God give us that grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Because <laughs> Lo 
papa, tout le monde, tout le monde, tout c'est bon, et